Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today Duff Dog and I are going to refresh the old 92 Chevy Silverado. That's right, you guys and gals, for some reason, watch the crap out of this video. I've been driving the crap out of this truck, and I got a crap load of parts that are sitting on the shelf that need to go on this thing because they're taking up a crap load of space. So I'm gonna stop saying crap, and we're gonna get into this. Duff, he really likes riding in this thing. We got merch with this pickup in it, Duff in the back. So go check that out down below. If you need decals with this pickup in it, and we're giving four packs, 10 bucks, Email us, mortgagecurepair at gmail.com. We take PayPal, or you can snail mail us a check, P.O. Box 1. That's how much we like this thing. I don't know what we've done since you guys have seen it last. We got the windows tinted, because they had no tint, and it was getting hotter than the Dickens in there. Just kidding, I like the way they look. 20%, no, 50%, because that's what's legal here in Podunk. Then we did the back window too, just because we like the way it looks. But the wheels are up at full turn, just barely. So I think we can maybe massage the lower control arms. These mirrors bother me so much that when Mike Yips drew up the decals, I had him draw little sport mirrors on it. And I told you guys I wanted sport mirrors. Scott Wilson, he sent us these mirrors. And I forget who it was, but another one of you people that didn't want to give me, oh, there you are. Dale Groot, he sent us actual sport mirrors. So we're gonna, we're gonna fit up and see which ones we like. These ones are a lot smaller, so they, they, they look cleaner, but at the same time, these ones are a lot more functional. So I don't know, we might do some playing around. See what, we, what we're gonna do here. It's terrible to drive at night because these headlights are all fogged over and there's just no bringing these back. And I think you can get, oh my gosh, we should have got mounts. And we should have got park lights too, but I got new headlights we're gonna stick in there, try to brighten things up. We got a new windshield installed by Perfection Auto Glass. Corey came up and banged that out for us. So yeah, all kinds of stuff with glass. We got new door seals. We got the headlights in there. We got a headliner for it. We're gonna take a crack at doing the headliner. Old Mickelson Racing and his old lady, they figured out how to do it, so we should be able to do it. We got new door hinge pins. We got new door latches. We got a HVAC door actuator. I think it's in the controls, but we're gonna try throwing an actuator at it. I got door latches, because every time you hit a bump, the doors just go They just, I don't know, they, they bounce around. It's really annoying. We should have took them for a ride first, but yeah, you can see just how much those doors. Look at that. Just look at it. Oh, look at that. Look how much they move up and down. So between the door latches and the door hinges, that's bad. We're gonna try to clean up the interior a little bit. Speaking of cleaning up, you're all clean from your bath because you rolled in the poopy when we went out to Benny's with the 66, so you're so soft and pretty, Duff. Yeah. Otherwise, this thing works great. I really like it. Tilt, cruise, power windows, overdrive, fuel injection. This thing's super good. It's been parked most of the winter because, you know, I don't want it to get all rusty. But I've had it out a handful of times this spring, burned a couple tanks of fuel through it. This thing's way good. Oh, the uh, TBI base gasket. It was idling a little bit high, and then one day she really started squealing like the power steering or alternator was going out. Unhooked the serpentine belt, squeal was there. Determined it was the base gasket on the TBI had went out, so I put that in there, fixed the squeal, and now it idles way lower than it ever has. Speaking of power steering, that's that's the leak we got to address. Look at that puddle down there, dump. Anyway, got a seal kit for the power steering sector. I've never done one, and I've heard they don't go very well. So we're gonna try it and it's probably gonna leak worse so we're just gonna have to buy a whole new sector. But hey, it was like eight bucks or something like that. So we'll give her a whirl. Let's rip into it. What do you wanna do first, Duff? The headlights are the biggest box. So let's get that ripped apart. And if that, if we need parts for the headlights, we can get some parts, maybe get them here by the time uh, we gotta have this video wrapped up. Cause we got a late start this week cause nothing seemed to go well yesterday or the day before because we had to walk home but enough me yapping let's uh pull some headlights out you can open the hood you just gotta pull this button here with your paw thanks for the help pal any rodent skin in there over the winter 
you can open it the rest of the way. Oh man, we gotta pull the whole grill out to replace these headlights. <sighs> GM, I tell you what. Didn't have some very bright ideas at times. Maybe we can sneak in there, I don't know. What holds you in even? Tell you what, let's look at the new ones and see. Man, look at how nice and shiny those are. We're gonna have to get park light lenses for sure. Otherwise, those are gonna look hideous matched up with those. So, it looks like it mounts with these bolts here and here, and we're not getting at them without taking the grill out. So I guess we're gonna take a grill out. Fun times. I think the 99 to 06, you just pull a couple pins out and they go whoosh, super easy. They got smarter later on. Well, they don't bust this grill out. At least the park lights are just four Torxes, so we can put it back together and still replace those. At least the new ones come with mounts. Like that. I guess we gotta take those park light lenses off anyway. One eternity later. Turns out there's an access hole you can go right in from the front. Now we just got a couple of park light bulbs, marker lights, whatever you want to call them. Bada bing, bada boom. That wasn't so bad, was it though? We had a new one to put in there. This one ain't too bad, I guess. All right. What are we gonna do to get you out of there? 10 millimeter? Sure. Our new lights come with bulbs. So we're gonna disconnect these and put them in there. Save them for a rainy day until we get sick of tripping over them. Always be sure to wrap your headlights, kids. It's just got condoms on everything. What do you folks think about them aftermarket? No, not the halo headlights, just, just bulbs in general. I don't like aftermarket headlights. I like the whole projection halo, to, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, but bulbs. Do the $50 bulbs work any better than the $9 bulbs? What do you think, Duff? I don't know. We can't afford them. But if they're that good, this thing was just, this thing was almost unsafe to drive in Vegas. Almost. Pretty much everything we drive is unsafe, let's be honest. So yeah, comment down below if the fancy Sylvania White Star halogen incandescent LED bulbs are any better. I know Chin, he likes, he likes the LED dome lights and tail lights and backup lights and marker lights not so much there's nothing I hate worse than those headlights I like Thunderhead 289 but those headlights he's got in his Maverick that like turn that the halo that turns green and purple and blue nope not for me throw that on the list with craggers and flexi hoses and side pipes and t-bolt wing nut valve cover hold downs and Mickey Thompson valve covers and white letter tires. What else did I forget? I'm sure there's a few things. Chicken chasers. Well, this is getting pretty long. I do like being able to see at night. We should have done a comparison though. Speaking of that, let's turn this on and see if they work. Yep. Perfect. That would be my luck to get it all put together and find out if all didn't work. The other thing is we should probably aim these things, seeing as how the pickup's got a little bit different altitude than it had before. Yeah. 
Very nice. Whoa, whoa, very nice. Let's stick it all back together. I'm gonna get some park lights on order because those are in terrible shape and these are really gonna stand out. But I think we can put it all back together. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's check, make sure all them lights is working before we put everything back together. Oh, look at that. You got a marker light out. Grab a 194 and put in there while we got it apart. Fixed it. The other thing I wanted to figure out is if the AC works and if it's the condenser leaking, now would be a time to address that, but that grill's easy enough to take out, so we'll figure out what's wrong with it and then address it. I'm betting it's the compressor. We're gonna put our chewy old park light lenses in for now. We'll get some new ones coming. These things are not gonna look good. Well, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would, but we definitely got to get some new park lights. What's next on the list, Duff? I don't know what's second on the list, but the second biggest box is these mirror boxes, so let's do a mirror. Speaking of seconds, I got another question for you boys and girls. We're thinking about doing a second channel for some, you know, behind the scenes stuff and the shenanigans like, you know, maintenance on the Bobcat or fixing the leaks in the roofs of the buildings and... You know, the junkyard crawls, just stuff like that. So, what I need from you is a name for the second channel. I don't want to be Mortsky Repair 2. So, I want to hear some good names. And if you comment the best name, which is chosen by myself and Chin, down below, we'll send you some swag, some stickers, and maybe we'll get up with some hats and a shirt or something. But. Comment down below what we should name the second channel. And, and just because you won doesn't mean we're going to start one next week. Because Chin and I are both swamped with everyday activities anyway. But we, we got a bunch of extra content and old stuff and just stuff we got to do something with. So second channel names. Go! All right, let's figure out how to put different mirrors on this thing and get rid of these hideous stainless steel things. Maybe we can kill two birds with one stone here. I don't know what it is with birds getting stoned, but we do the mirror, the latch assembly, and we should probably clean up the door panel too. I don't think there's any cleaning to that. We Somebody's leaned on her a bit too much. We can clean it up a little bit though. And we could do door hinges as well. There's a it's supposed to be a spring in there for a detent, you know, so the door don't flop around like that. Duff, you're gonna get hit in the face. I don't know how you fix that short of welding a new hinge assembly on. So, let's get this door panel off. We can do that. Also, we can put door seals in. Yeah. I don't know which seals I got. Those ones are way bad. These ones are a little bit better. These just maybe need to be slid up. Slid back. Same thing, right, Duff? You like this pickup. And you like cool rest coolers too, don't you? Back to work, he says. So first thing we gotta do, pop this little trimmy do off and break all the clips. Oh, so good. So good. So good. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, day job. Don't quit it. How do we get these clips apart there, Duffleupagus? If that ain't the dumbest design, I don't know what is. So there's these two little clips. You gotta pop this guy out of there first, the button, the switch, and then you gotta slide the connector up and out. We didn't wreck anything yet. Now we're gonna take this screw out of the door pull and lose it. And then we should just unsnap the door. I know it ain't held in by much anymore it appears and then lift her up right oh she's brittle supposed to have a bunch of them fir tree clips but looks like we're down to the the final two i need to get some of them 
Okay, now I think we take this foam out of here. That should get us at the mirror. The mirror hardware. That's what I said. Some 10 millimeter nuts. Looks like these two we can get a socket on. And that guy up there, I'm gonna have to use a wrench. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think we're going with the big dogs. We can always take them off. We don't like the way they look. This one's got a new seal on it, or a seal on it. So let's reuse the one we got. At least the last guy was nice enough to leave us the nuts so that we can drop them down inside the door panel and have spares. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Happened on the job again. What do you think? How's it look, Duff? <sighs> Way better. I don't know. Still kind of big and clunky. I think we'll. I think we'll. We're gonna. We're gonna put the small one on. We're gonna try the small one. I don't know. I just can't. It's better than before, but we're gonna put the. We're gonna put the little guy on. Those little guys are what the 454 SS pickups got, and a buddy of mine's got one, and they're terrible for driving. We don't need to see what's going on behind us. That's all in the past. Right, Duff? Plus we got a sweet one of the compass on the windshield, even though the compass don't work. I wonder what it takes to get those to work. Does anybody know? Has anybody got all that stuff to work out of like a 98 and a 92? Comment that down below too. All right, I'm gonna work real fast swapping this out again. These guys don't come with a seal, so we have to use our old one. They don't come with nuts either, so. Then we got that other set, so we got spares. Because we already dropped one. There, see how that looks, Duff? I like it. I like it better. Now. I'm just have to drive it, see how we can see. It's pretty easy to change. I'm just gotta pop that door panel off. We're gonna have to take that off and get some new fir trees because I don't have those on hand either. I don't think. Anyway, we'll get some on the Amazonia. Now, let's see what it takes to go through a door latch and door pins. Are you ready to call her a night duff? Yeah, I'm getting there too. All right, see how this goes. Let's get this big access panel, so. Gotta be easy, right? Something just jumped up and bit me. What's holding you? Oh, did you get out the window down? Yeah. There has most definitely been an electrical fire in here, it appears. Look at all that stuff that's melted in there. I don't. Feel like that's supposed to be like that. Maybe it's some type of undercoating or something. Or it just gets that hot in Oklahoma. Now we gotta unhook all these rods. And hopefully we can fish that guy out of there. See what happens. Alright, we got the one hooked up to the handle, the one hooked up to the manual lock, the one hooked up to the electric lock. Now we gotta get it unhooked from the door handle itself. Oh yeah, that might be fun. Got it. What was that clip? Door panel. Threaded something or other. Where did you come from right there? Now we'll lift the window up, tape it up in place. Be a good time to put a new seal in here. Wish I had one. This is going 
well. Sometimes I really wish Duff had thumbs. And by sometimes I mean very often. Now we gotta get the rods off the outside door handle. It's all scratched up in here like somebody's done this before. Also, it'd probably be a good time to put a new outside door handle on. This one's not broken yet. Pretty common for these to break. Got one rod holding it yet. We're gonna unbolt the latch and see if we can't help our situation. Well, that just pushes into it. Oh, for cheese and rice. You don't even need to get that one off there. You can just fish it out this vent hole. Very carefully like. I'm bada bing, a bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. We just gotta swap these rods over to the new one. And hopefully that resolves all of our worries. Hopefully, these things weren't cheap either. I think they're like 75 bucks a piece. I don't know, I bought them like four months ago, so I don't remember. Got our rods all on there. I think this one's for your door handle. This one's for your lock. This one's for your lock. And then the other one, for your handle on the outside, just pushes through that hole right there. So we got to make sure we get that rod stuck in that hole. Also, this will cause cancer in California and reproductive harm. So be careful. You don't want to die from a door latch. Or worse. Okay, this one there. Now, we gonna get that rod to go in this hole that we can't even see. Story of my life right there. <laughs> that's oh, a knee slapper. The... Just put some hair on it. That's what Grandpa always said. I don't know what he meant by that. Hair. Now, Let's get, a, let's get a bolt started. Before we lose any rest. Isn't that strange? We don't get political around here, but pro is the opposite of con. So if progress, pro is the opposite of con, Congress is the opposite of progress. I'm not I'm not saying anything political though. That's just coincidental, I think. Got those started. Now let's hook this lock rod up to this guy. Oh, we gotta put the clippy doo back on it. Clippy dippy doo, where are you? We need some help from you now. Gotta go that way. How did that ever call? Fight gravity? Oh, for cheese and rice. That's a real bugger. Becca. Go to your home. Do you know where your home is? Why didn't you just go home? That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Look at this guy just snoring over there. Oh, now he opened his eyes. You were sleeping on the job. I saw it. You can't even keep your eyes open anymore. Such good help. Don't worry, I got this, pal. Just reverse procedure now. Tighten up our door handle, tighten up our latch, put our vent cover in. Put our interior panel in place once we get our window hooked back on the track. Seems pretty easy. I'll do it real fast. work, windows work, what is I'm happy there, I feel like it didn't do that before, yeah it's because that door panel's got a little curl to it, 
Whammy. Whammy. There you go. See how she latches. Not that good. Push on her. Now can we lift up and down on it? Or is that all on the door hinges? Oh, it's way better. Way better. Now we got to uh, put some hinge pins in it. Hopefully we caught them in time so they're not complete trash. But complete trash is that door stop thing. Does anybody know how to fix those? Looks like that pin is swedged in there. So I don't know if there's any fix to it. I didn't do much Googling on it. But it would be nice to have so when you're parked on a hill, doors would smack you in the face when you get in and out. All right. Door hinge is going to wait till tomorrow. Duff is tuckered. So am I. All right, back to this thing. I don't know if I told you guys. I got plastic clips, fir trees is what I call them, for that door panel in order. You can get replacement pins for these detents. And I ordered new springs too because I thought mine were missing, but my spring's in there. And I ordered the tool to compress them. So we got to try to figure out how to get that out of there in order to put these new door hinge pins in there but this pin goes up this direction this pin goes down that direction there's a little clip that holds this one in you know because gravity if it wasn't there we're gonna see if we can't get these pins out of there and then we got to put bushings in and the bushings are in the hinge on this side and cab on that side or vice versa i don't know either way and then we're gonna have to have somehow hold the door and since my sidekick doesn't have thumbs we'll just put the cherry picker on it you know find the center of gravity just perfect like and see how that goes. Man, I wish we had a lift. Oh, we'll use a ratchet strap. So we're gonna do that. We gotta get that spring for the detent out of there. That little guy. Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. And then there's the detent, and there's the roller it's supposed to ride against. I mean, it does ride against it, but she's flangered. So it looks like the bushings are on the cab side on the top on the door side on the bottom and they've been lubed up a bunch you can see the white lithium maybe i did that i don't know either way when you park on a hill and the door comes and smashes you in the ankle every time that's annoying so we're gonna fix that too and that's part of the rattle which is probably part of why the door latch went out i've never seen where the latch has got to be replaced but anyway enough yapping we're gonna do some things and hopefully while we got it off i remember to grind the head off of that pin. We could take it off and set it out of the way, but then we'd have to fish the wire harness out of there. And we weren't smart enough to do all that. We had the door panel off. Maybe we'll do that on that side. We is getting an edumacation. I'm sure you guys can't see nothing. You can see me knock my eyeball out when I knock the spring out. We gotta get this spring out of the way because this pin's gotta go down through that spring. There we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All this spring does is holds against that detent kind of like a rooster what are they a rooster comb and it rides against that roller now i'm gonna get this little clippy do out of there where's our clippy do remover i think i think we just hit it real hard with a hammer it'll go i can't see and hammer at the same time there she's sliding out i'm gonna go get the cherry picker here's our new door pin set up it's the doorman help exclamation point part number three eight four one six it fits gms anyway see how that pin swedged at that end swedge is that the word that ain't the word what do they call that but these bushings are different size see that one fits loose but it fits tight down there and this one's gonna fit tight up here but it won't fit down there so you gotta make sure you put the bushings in the right way or you're gonna be real unhappy and then there's their clippy do that they have to retain it now you know what do they call knurling knurling is what that is and what that is what a fun word to say knurling i feel like that should be a sport in the olympics so here's our lifting contraption you got the old stick hoist hooked up to the goodyear ratchet strap go check out the cab there you go it ain't gotta be nothing fancy. This is what you gotta do when you're a loser and you ain't got no friends. It's like a hydraulic loser switch. Make sure that nut's tight so it won't fall on your head. So now, we're gonna finish knocking that pin out. And then we're gonna knock the other pin up. Oh, sure would be nice if I hadn't lowered this pickup. Be easier to get underneath and whack that thing. It'll be worth it. Let's finish whacking this top one. 
Ain't you them kids that have been whacking off in my tool shed? There's GM's version of the Clippy Doo, or whatever brand pin setup's in here now. Wiggler just right, we can slide it out of there, maybe. There we go. And all the wear should be on the bushings, not the pin. Unless the bushings are completely gone, and then it starts wearing into the pin. You don't want that. Call me lightning with a hammer because I never hit the same spot twice. Well, there's a clippy doo on that guy, too. Clippy dippy doo, where are you? I need some help from you now. Oh boy, is that door gonna balance? We're gonna find out. Alright, pin number two out. Now. Can we slide this out of the way? You can only slide as long as the wires are in there. So you can see that bushing, it's still there, which is good. Sometimes they'll wear all the way through on this back side. Obviously the top wears more than the bottom because there's a lot more tension on that side. And you can see there's the bottom one. So we're gonna knock those out, knock some new ones in, try to knock the head off of that pin for that detent, get that knocked out of there. We're gonna do a whole lot of knocking. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Oh, it's such a good singer. Well, how in the French are we gonna get that out of there? Duff. Gotcha. There's our old bushing. Ain't even in that bad of shape. She must have been a little slopped out. No, how are we gonna get that guy out? Very carefully, as Grandpa would say. Gotcha. One more to go. Okay, so this pin went from the top down. So we gotta put the big bushing on the top here. And with that knurling, you might have to tap her into place. Or squeeze it into place. I don't know. What we're we gonna do. You had a plan, Duff? Maybe we'll just try to squeeze them in there. You can't call them a channel lock. What are they, adjustable pliers? I think that's what they are. Boop! Just press them right in. Love taps for good measure. I freaking hope we put the right one in there. Yep. Same thing on the bottom one. That one slides right in. Now we just gotta do the top two. This pin goes bottom up. So this bushing, the big one goes on the bottom. This works pretty good. Just squeeze them right in. Smaller diameter, inside diameter bushing goes up top. Put that in the right way? I think so. Boop! Oh, we chunked out a little edge of the flange there, but don't do a whole lot. It'll still ride on the rest of it. Hokely dokely! Hokely dokely! Now we're gonna knock this thing off while we're in here, and then knock that pin out. All right, let's get rid of this guy. There you go. Same thing, this one's Got the knurling on the bottom, and then it was swedged at the top. The new ones obviously aren't swedged, you just put a clip on there. And you can see what's wrong with this one. She's uh, bent to snot. Not so good. No bueno. So we're going to get a new one of those. And a new spring, even though the old spring's probably just fine. We ain't putting the old spring in until we get this new part back in. So now let's line everything back up, drop the new pins in, send her down the road. Let's do the bottom pin first, seems how that goes from the top down. We're not fighting gravity. Right, Duff? All right, started. Now let's see if we can start the top one, and then if we can start the top one, then that one should be lined up for sure. There, started. 
Actually, that's all the way in. I'm gonna put our clippy on there. Well, these seem like some cheesy clips. I think we'll try to get a socket that fits just over that. We'll push it on with that. Hopefully it doesn't push the pin out. Sure enough, pin went down. How can we hold that pin up? I got some idea. We're gonna put this here locking pliers on the pin so it can't slide down. Because it's gonna be pushing against the hinge. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There we go. I don't think it can go anywhere now. Maybe. Maybe. There. I really don't like that clip. Wish they had a better design, Duff. Let's get the bottom one in, though. There we go, got our hinges all rebuilded. I didn't put the clippy do on the bottom one because I figured that thing's not gonna fight gravity and walk up, but I've been wrong before. And we gotta put that spring in there and the detent rod, whatever you wanna call it, but we ain't gonna do that until we get the new one in there. Well, there you have it, about half hour worth of work. Could go faster with two people. You can also do it with a floor jack and a block of wood put underneath the door or just have a real strong person there, but. We got neither another person or anybody strong around here, so the old stick hoist works well. Now on to the other door. Let's, let's see how this thing shuts and latches and doesn't rattle. I don't know, pal, I don't think we're going for a ride just yet. Shuts good. How's it for up and down movement? Oh, real good. Still got some play in it though. What the heck? Need some oil. I'm guessing these new replacement pins and bushings aren't up to snort like the old ones were. That's disappointing all that play that's in there. And it's not like the bushings were all worn out so that there should have been wear in the actual hinge itself. I don't know. Whatever. Definitely got to looby doob them up though. Little croil, I'll see if it's any better. Oh yeah, perfect. Good to go. I'm gonna clean that window, Duff. Some of these greasy paw prints are all over it. Not you. Well, I'm gonna go over to the other side and you guys can watch me do it. Super fast motion. I didn't put pins on this side because they seem just as tight as the new ones we put in. So I think we're pretty much done on this side. Other than, yeah, we need some new fir trees because these ones are wasted. And this plastic panel here, this door panel just is bad shape. You guys don't get rust down in Oklahoma, but that sun is brutal on all the plastic and rubber. Glad we got that done. Uh-oh. Hopefully that door is just locked. Whoopsies. I also knocked that one dent out a little bit. This one, there was a impact support brace in there, so I couldn't get at that one. I didn't do a bang-up job, but those two really bothered me when I looked at them. They bother you too? All right, so hopefully that door opens again. Yep, she was just locked. I always like to leave the windows down when I'm doing this stuff. That's that door seal, I think. Oh, 
Oh, and the door panel's catching too. So we gotta get some fir trees in that son of a gun. They are on order though. And they're pretty easy to put in. So if anybody's got a good replacement gray door panel, that'd be much appreciated because this one's on its way out. But, let's see. Oh yeah, she's tight, doesn't move up and down at all. Hopefully that fixed our rattle. And we got rid of those ugly mirrors. Now, we gotta adjust them. That's the fun part. I'm not looking forward to looking out these things because I remember from driving another 454 SS pickup that had these on, they don't do much. What do you think, Duff, you like that seat? You can sit on it, but we're gonna take it out. So you guys can see this carpet is just disgusting. Is it not? Is it not? So we're gonna pull that out, do some pudding things, pressure wash it, and then we'll clean up the kick panels and what do they call those? I don't know. But we gotta pull the seat out to get that out. <laughs> You're a goob. Damn glad to meet you. Hey, Eric Stratton, Rush Chairman. Damn glad to meet you. So we're gonna pull the seat out, and we're gonna pull the plastic out, and then we're gonna take these B pillar posts out and everything. And then we're gonna take the visors out. If anybody's got some gray visors or knows how we can fix these up, because they are just disgusting. We'll show you when we get them out. We're gonna pull that headliner out. We're gonna do headliner. So we're gonna just gut this whole interior. We need a dash too, but we don't have one of those and they're probably really hard to ship. So seats coming out, plastic trim, carpet, and headliner. We're we're really getting after it. We're making big strides here, making better ourselves. Right, Duff? I just I just want to get the cackle bird that's that's on the seat there. Just give me a break. We're gonna clean this thing up real good. Okay. Hopefully, you know, some torques, a couple of 13 mils or 15s to get that seat out. And some Phillips screws. We'll have this thing out of here in no time. Don't look at me like that. We'll get it out of here. It's gonna be easy. We're not gonna break any of this 30-year-old plastic. Budweiser, Flavor Lock Crown, Penny, a Dime, another Penny, 12 cents, and a Budweiser cap. Pretty disappointing. All right, we gotta take the seat belt brackets out, tray back here, this panel, these panels, this panel, the A pillar covers. What are these kick, not kick panel, I don't know. Tread plate, whatever, you know what I'm saying. We got stuff we gotta take out. There you have it. After about 20 minutes of work, this panel just snaps right in. Try to pull out on the bottom and lift up and not break these tabs like I did. These B pillar panels got a couple screws in the bottom. Get your seat belt bracket and they pop right out. You can see the sweet speakers we put in there when we had her apart the last time. I think this piece just snaps. Nope, kidding, there's some screws. We gotta take those screws out and then we gotta take the screws out here for the visors and then these A pillar covers just snap in place. We can see just how bad this carpet was. Like this carpet's never seen daylight. You can see the difference in color so we're gonna pull that out vacuum it pressure wash it see if we can't get some life back out of that thing and then yeah there's a couple of torques for seat belts down here it's torques up top a couple of 15 millimeters down there 18 millimeter for those seat belts on the inside kick panels just pop right out a few screws on these easy peasy we only need a handful of tools you want to take these clips back out before you put it back together and then try to clip them onto the tabs on that panel and snap that in place. I wish the rest of the paint was as nice as that. All right, let's get this carpet out, finish getting the headliner out, and get out of here. No, not you. Sorry, your seat's gone. It's laying in the corner if you want to lay on it.
You want to pull up on your side, pal? Yeah, there you go. Grab on it with your teeth. Looks like we could do some vacuuming in here. These floors are freaking phenomenal. Hey, another penny. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. Real good. Alright. On to the head. All right, we just about got her out of there. Broke a couple of clips on this A-pillar cover on the other side, so we're gonna be looking for one of those as well. I'm gonna just find a whole another donor pickup. All this stuff's so brittle from being in the sun and being 30 years old. Yeah, you can see that clip is up there, and then we kind of cracked her, pulling her down, but we'll get her back in place. It'll hold for quite a while. I didn't notice that the floor mat was a little wet on the other side, so there must be something leaking. I don't know. We'll have to do some digging. And then I think these are the door seals we got, so now's a good time to put those in. But we gotta get this out. The one last thing is there's a couple of pieces of hook and loop tape. It's not Velcro, that's patented. Hook and loop tape. So we gotta unhook that, and then this will drop right out. There you have it. 30 year old cardboard. We'll clean that up and glue some new material to it. We're gonna have to clean our hands before we do that. That was literally the last shred of the headliner that was left on this thing. Here's what a gutted OBS Chevy regular cab interior looks like scattered everywhere. Oh, don't forget the headliner. I wonder if that water was leaking right here. We'll have to get those coming too. What do you think, Duff? Doesn't look that comfortable, does it? But that adds quite a bit of sound dead enough. So if you got some visors or you got some plastic pieces you're looking to part with and ship, Hit us up with an email, mortsgearpair at gmail.com. It's down here in the description. Or if you need some decals. Also, I think Chris Sanders put together a Mortsky Repair fan book page on the Facebooks. So if you want to go on there and post silly memes and pictures of me doing dumb stuff, check it out. Mortsky Repair fan club book page, something or other. You'll find it. There's like 2,300 people that found it already. So, yeah. Go check him out. All right. Is it too dark to pressure wash? I think so. Plus it's raining out. And I don't want to go stand in the rain because that just sounds as dumb as pressure washing with your shirt off. Maybe we'll do some vacuuming. We'll put some new seals in too. That'd be a good time for that, I suppose, eh? Eh. I don't suppose you're from AAA, are you? Ooh? AAA, you know? A-A-A. Oh, A-A, eh? Hey, I just came from A-A. Before we vacuum the schmoo out of the corners here, let's pull this door seal out. And we'll vacuum it out and then put the new one in. Oh, so many smells in that jute padding. Or you could do it. Just grab on it with your teeth and pull. I really wish we could figure out how to get that A pillar cover out of here. You got a feeling you're going to want to get out of there. You're probably not going to like what I'm about to do next. Okay, suit yourself. We just gotta sneaky snake this thing right back on there. I'm a slathery little snake snake. So we want the bulb to go to the outside. I'm guessing since the seam was there from the factory, we'll put the seam there again. Looks like they gave us a little bit extra, so we're gonna make sure she's all good and tight. Trim it off. Ouch. I was just gonna say, I bet that's sharp. Sure enough, it is. There we go. We just got one more side to do. Fudge nuggets. Trying to figure out why this jute matting is so wet. I don't feel like it was the seal. I know on a lot of vehicles they got problems with water leaking down the cowl. So if you know what it is that's causing the floor to get wet, you know it's starting to kind of, I mean it's not soft by any means, but it's getting some surface rust. I want to keep her clean. 
So if you know what's causing that, let me know. Is there like a vent down at the bottom of the cowl that we gotta clean out or something? That's irritating. And we're not gonna keep it inside all the time when it rains, so we gotta address that, right Duff? Right, you sniff it out, see if you can figure out what it is. Well Duff wants to go outside, so we're gonna wheel this carpet outside. We're gonna give her a quick blowy, just the way we like them. And we're gonna do some pudding things. It's cold, it's windy, and I don't like pressure washing, so. It should be great, huh Duff? You can watch Duff try to sneak out the door. You know, he's this tall, so he waits till the door gets this high up and he's got a snake underneath. Right Duff? You silly boy. This house is a prison! Every dang time. What do you get that look for, Duff? It's better than it was. So what I do when I'm pressure washing is I try to hit the whole thing and you just watch the water where it's hitting and when it's a dirty spot, it'll come out brown or green or pink or whatever color stain you're taking out. Usually it's brown from dirt. And I just keep going back and forth and back and forth until that brown water eventually turns clear, kind of like flushing a cooling system. And then there's spots like, I don't know if this is ink or what that is, it's blue. Yeah, Duff will point it out. But I don't know, that didn't want to come out. And this is under the seat back here, so I didn't really care about it too much, but I don't know, somebody spilled their cola down the seat belt hole, but that one don't want to come out. I've never seen one where the passenger side is way worse than the driver's side. But yeah, over here it was real bad. A lot of that doesn't come out. These carpets, I looked, they're like 130 bucks plus shipping, you know, so. So say 150, 175 bucks, you could put a new one in. Well, we don't want a new one because A, we're cheap, and B, Duff's gonna be riding in it and I'm gonna be working and getting in and out of it. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit better than it was. It doesn't look like a freaking crime scene just happened there. So quick and easy way, I don't know what I had. Looks like the camera says 36 minutes, so time to set up, you know, 20, 25 minutes of pressure washing. And ideally, you'd wanna put this out in the sun to have a dry off, but the sun hasn't decided to come out here in Podunk, and we might not see it for another two months, so I'm just going to have to hope it dries out inside here. But it's a lot better than it was. It's still, we'll see what it dries up like, but she's a, she's a little bit disgusting. Well, that's what I do. You can do it on seats, you can do it on door panels, pretty much anything that's fabric. You know, you don't want to get too aggressive. Some of it, it might tear up. Like I said, this carpet's 150 bucks. Seats are probably a little bit more expensive. And if you got a little bit better climate than this, where it can dry out, day or two, good as new. But sitting inside our shop here at 65 degrees, it might take a while to dry out. But that's why I wanted to get it done now. We'll go start crack a lacking on the headliner. Maybe we'll set this. What is, do you hear that, Duff? What is that? Ho, 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 there he is. He's got his jacket on. He's got the Velcro shoes. Oh yeah, flip the hood up. Oh, gloves and everything. Looks like he's got a tweaked frame on his trailer though. But yeah, oh, yeah. slow down while you fix your hood. There you go, hopefully he's got the seat heater on today. Mower man sighting. We ain't seen him for a while because the weather's been real ugly. We just rolled this morning, or last night, 99,000, so maybe by the time this video's out, we'll be at 100,000 subscribers, I don't know what I'm gonna do. If we're gonna give something away, or if I'm just gonna kill a couple more brain cells, or sandwiches, I don't know. We'll definitely have a sandwich to celebrate, but I don't know what we're gonna do. If we're gonna do anything, we're too frickin' swamped around here to even keep our heads above water. All right, I'm gonna go blow my nose, wipe off my glasses, Take off these muck boots, take off this jacket. Try to get feeling back in my fingers. Thaw my fingers, not unthaw, thaw. And then we'll start working on a headliner.
Love them pressure washing seams. Duff does too. You're all muddy again. Gosh dang it. Well, my fingers was thawing. I had a Tiffany. She said, hang that thing from the stick hoist. Yeah. Like there was hardly any water coming out of it. Now that we got it up there, it's all running out. It's like a clothesline. You millennials know what those is? That's what they had before the, what do you call them things? That spin around and the, the, the washing machines. The washing machines. You, your, your ma, she'd, she'd take your tidy whities and she'd go, she'd go hang them on the line, clothesline. And they had these clothes pins. Back in the day, they was made out of wood <clears throat> and you could clamp them onto your fuel line too if you had vapor lock. I don't know, it's supposed to help that, dissipate the heat on your metal fuel lines. So if you ever open the hood on a 58 Chevy with a 235 and a metal fuel line and it's got a bunch of clothes pins on it or it's got a bunch of these metal tweezer looking things on there, spring loaded, it's because it was vapor locking on that guy and he thought he fixed it. The better the mechanic they were, the more clothes pins they had on their fuel lines. Anyway, put your carpet on the clothes line or a cherry picker or drape across your tailgate <clears throat> or whatnot. Okay, I wonder if this thing wasn't replaced. Steven's Auto Products, or maybe that's who made them. She's a medium gray for a 92 Chevrolet GMT 400. Steven's Auto, made in America. I'm guessing this is a factory original one. Yeah, I don't know why, it's, it's just so gross. I couldn't even get that to come out there on the edge, but I think that gets covered by the Whatchamacallit, the tread plate? What? Sill plate! Finally, I thought of that word. 42 tries later, sill plate. Okay, clean up our mess. You know how you always hope that, you know, they put these covers on and protect the seat? I thought, oh, this will clean up pretty dang good. You know, there's not a lot of wear, not a lot of debris, pretty good color. I don't know what these people had going on over here, but it's terrible, isn't it, Duff? And it's like, rock like it was something burned i don't know what it is i don't pressure wash and just ain't gonna cut it with this guy's this got oh it does have the freaking armrest in there too even dang we might have to find a new seat cover this one's just gonna have to do for now this thing is not worth pressure washing she's toasty toasty i want you to do something not doing that again i burned mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. toasty there was one of these things for 175 bucks on facebook marketplace the other day and i dragged my feet and finally messaged the guy and he said oh it's already sold figures i should have messaged him let's see what we can come up with for a different seat cover because that thing is not going to clean up it's not even worth our time to pressure wash and have to deal with a wet butt until it dries out so if somebody's got an 88 to 94 bench seat let us know that's gonna probably have to be close because shipping's gonna be a killer on that one. Okay, headliner, we'll get that done though. Maybe, without screwing it up. Probably not. What did he get? Oh, just getting groceries. He's got the hood down, going with the wind. He's got a nicer seat cover than we do, Duff. He's got her made, made in the shade. All right, cleaned off spot on a bench. So we can do this headliner. That's the other Morsky law. If you've got a flat surface in a shop, it's going to fill up with crap. Guaranteed. How should we state that law? Any flat surface, thou shall be covered in crap. I threw a sheet over it. We're going to be moving this around maybe, and I don't want to get the new headliner dirty. We got some 3M... Super 77 spray adhesive. We got a scissors. We got a carpet knife. It identifies as a headliner knife today. Right, Duff? Right. And then we got uh, a Brillo pad of sorts. I think I'm just going to use that to try to get rid of some of this loose stuff in here. We want to get it as clean as we can to adhere to the surface. The scissors is going to be to trim the edges and the Headliner knife is going to be to cut out these holes. We're going to kind of trim it close to size. And then we're going to start in the middle. And we're going to spray adhesive on the headliner and the material, both sides. Glue it down. Let her sit for a bit. I think you got to let it sit first. We'll read the instructions. Just kidding. You spray it, both sides. Let it sit for a minute to tack up. Put it down. We're just going to go a couple, a couple inches at a time. 
a foot at a time, I don't know. If we had more help, we could go faster, but you see my help? Also, I don't know if it's a good idea to put your wannabe Chinesium Beverly and your planishing hammer to the your bench. It's handy when you need them, but it's not handy when you need the bench. So there's that. Oh, and I gotta start putting my stickers on my, what do we call these things? Bead roller, so I can be like that cool pudding guy. Mine just collects junk and dust. We bead rolled something on the channel. No, we probably didn't. One of these days we will. All right, I'm gonna get to scrubbing. I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh yeah. Before we get the material out, I'm gonna go wash my hands so we don't stain up our new material. Material come from Amazonia. So did the glue. Scissors and the knife were, they were in my collection. Oh man, this looks so good already, Duff. We can just leave it as is. Just tipped out with some compressed air. Here's our new headliner. Come from USA Fabric Store. I don't know what color it is. Light gray, let's hope. Get the headliner today, folks. That's the color that it is, I guess. Duff is not enthused. Who really wants the static cling to itself? Is that a word? So as you can tell, it's way too big. So we're gonna trim her down to size. So we can work with it a little easier. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, you got a sweet sword out of the deal. Yeah! Well, we could cut it in half, Duff, if you had thumbs, and we could have a sword fight. <sighs> We're definitely keeping that. Up. See, flat surfaces. It doesn't even have to be perfectly flat. You just get yourself a Model A coupe, and you can put square body dash pads, and third gen Dodge grills, and extension cords, and air hoses. Let's trim this thing down just a hair. Just, just enough. We should, we should trim it so that it's, we got plenty of extra material for we could try doing those divisors. Key word, try. Sure would be handy having a second person. Well, Mickelson, he did one in his crap piece. Didn't give us much knowledge on how to do it. So I had to message his old lady, get some pointers from her. She said, try about the size first, kind of. Close to size. And it's easier to work with. Which makes sense. She's a smart gal. Okay. So now, we're going to take our headliner skizzers here. We're going to leave ourselves some material on this end. Don't want to cut her too short. Oh man, I got her dirty. Oh, that's a good skizzers. What kind is that? It's titanium by Westcott. It's not Fiskers. Ma always liked the Fiskers. Now let's roll that all nicely. There's nothing nice about what we do around here. I don't know why we're doing this. There's one more thing to sell at my auction sale when I die, I guess. There, there. Oh, did you look at that? Would you just look at it? Yeah, look see. at that. And if you tell that to the cop, look at that. Not... Now where's that gonna go and collect dust? Back inside the bag from which it came it. I suppose it'll be like a tent and it'll never fit back in its original state. Probably not, because I didn't roll it up tight enough. You're just... You're just gonna hang out here, little buddy. Flat surfaces. We'll start with the side face and you. Oh, we don't want to glue our knife in there. Alrighty, French precautions, containments, physicians, volatile. Shake can before using. Hold can six to eight inches from surface to be sprayed. Make bond while adhesive is aggressively tacky. Aggressively tacky. Sounds like the clothing that people wore in the 70s. After use, invert can to press spray tip until 
adhesive stops coming through nozzle. Test for tackiness by gently touching the adhesive with your knuckle. Not your fingertip, your knuckle. If the adhesive transfers to your skin, it's too wet. If the adhesive is aggressively tacky and does not transfer to your skin, it's ready to bond. If the adhesive is dry or only has a very light tack and it is too dry, another coat of adhesive should be applied to at least one of the surfaces. A line spray tip so arrow points to dot on rim. Bonding range. One surface, 10 seconds to 10 minutes. Two surfaces, 10 seconds to 20 minutes. Whatever that means. Aggressively tacky. That's the first time I've heard that. You know, if you really wanted to, you could fill in this area. You know, smooth it out a bit. We just kind of do things half A around here. Watch me shake this real fast. Oh, all those years of playing with a shake weight are really paying off. Yeah, I've got a small white one. Does that make a difference? Aggressively tacky. Duff, you got any knuckles we can use for this? Six to eight inches? What's that? That's like this far, right? Okay. Shh, Nikes. I think it's not aggressively tacky yet. Oh, transfer to my skin. So it's only moderately tacky. Kind of like the decor that your mother-in-law has in the den. All right. Sticking to my knuckle. Still only moderately tacky. Nothing like watching glue dry. Puffin glue, on the other hand. That's a good time. So it's aggressively tacky in spots where I laid it in too thick, like over here, it sticks to your skin. So try to put it on evenly. I guess that's the tech tip of the day. But it's good here, it's good up here. So now we're just going to press from the middle out. I'm not pressing aggressively. I don't want to screw up that headliner base. Yeah, I guess that's what we learned. You don't, you don't got to put too much glue. There's a fine line. See, if I would have filled that hole in, we wouldn't have that little mark. Now we just got to do the rest. All right, aggressively tacky. Perfect. Don't get tacky over there. Start in the middle. Like the man's. Oh no, not a crease. So it looks like you can work a crease out if you do it right away. Sweet. I'm going to do the other side. I think we're just gonna go for the whole thing, maybe? I don't know. Is that a bad idea, Duff? Doing this left hand is bad. Uh-oh, stuck to the table. So you got one side done here. I trimmed it off pretty rough, like, mainly because the sides and the back get covered by trim. This is the A-pillar and this is whatever that dome light piece. The front though, we're gonna probably wanna trim a little bit nicer even though that kind of tucks up by the windshield. Maybe we'll even try to leave some extra and just glue it up there. I don't know. I guess if we glue it and it doesn't fit because we gotta have room for that stuff, we could always cut it off. Look at that. We glued the freaking cap right to it. So, we'll finish wrapping her up here, trim her up. I guess the best thing to do would be get a real sharp big scissors and then you could just run along it. Maybe you could even do it with the headliner knife, I don't know. But she's looking pretty good. Good enough for the girls we go with. Could have put maybe put some more glue in there so that'd be a little bit more defined. Anyway, let's get this thing wrapped up. I'm over it.
Got her trimmed off up here. I think we'll throw a quick slobber of glue up there. Peel that over. Call it good. It looks like there was a glue line up here where the original one was kind of glued up there. Oh, you're an angry dog today. One of the groomer tomorrow. Maybe he's upset about that. We're excited. Who knows? It's going to take a whole can. I had a leftover can and that didn't quite make it. And then I had another leftover can and there wasn't much in that one. So now we're finally using the new one. Tech tip of the day, hold them upside down. Same with spray cans. Spray, spray, spray paint cans? Until they spray clear. That clears out the nozzle. And then you wipe it off on your nice shirt. And you put it back on the shelf for the next time. The more you know. Alright. She is aggressively tacky. I'm just going to peel her over. With my dirty hands. Looks like this was the only side that was curled over before. That was the only side that has a glue line on it. Now we just got to cut out some slots for our visors. How do we want to do that? Make sure you got a real dull knife too. This was a good one. And all you got to do there, just have a hole to poke that visor through. We got some creasing going on here, so I kind of screwed up that side. Hopefully, a pillar covers cover that up. That's what they're there for. And then go try to get all the glue off your hands. That might take all week. Okay, let's go on to something that's a little more not so neat and tidy. Man, it's glue stuck. Ugh. This is why I don't like nice things. No. Done. Finished product. I suppose you could put some glue in there and try to glue that back together, but again, a pillar color is going to clamp that. You got to be clean. There's a dirt spot there too. And a glue spot there. A couple of creases there. We don't even try for perfection around here because we know we'll never get it. But hey, not bad for the first time we ever recovered a molded headliner. See how it looks once we get it installed. Plowing snow with the mower deck today. Really bogging deep through the uh, drifts we got here. We had us a nice snowstorm last night. Anyway, I think we're gonna try getting a headliner in there without getting it all dirty. Speaking of nice and clean. Look at this pretty boy. Did you get a haircut? Did you have a spa day? Are you ready to go rolling something stinky? The good news is it's cold, so all the deer turds are frozen hard. You like that yak? milk butter chew thing don't you they last forever let's get the headliner in carpet's pretty much dried out there's still some stainage going on the other thing you can do it kind of gives it a, a rough different feel after you pressure wash it i've seen guys do it it's kind of a cheesy used car salesman flipper thing to do but you can Kind of comb it out a little bit and then you quick mist it with some gray paint or whatever color your carpet is and I think you rub it in when it's still not when it's wet, but it just kind of tacks up a little bit It's basically like dyeing it. You know, we're not really out anything for trying Should we have some paint? Should we see if we can find some gray primer and rub it into that carpet? That's under the seat. Most of this gets covered. This will be seen Like up there. There's a couple of them and on the driver's side the lighting ain't that good over here, but this one will mostly be exposed. It's really not that bad. And it works better with thicker carpet, you know, longer pile cut. I don't know what you want to call it. You're a silly boy scratching yourself on that door. See how dirty the door is? Now you're going to be dirty like that. Ugh. That's why we can't have nice things. So a tech tip of the day, if you got a stain in your carpet and you can't get it washed out, hit her with some paint. Only if you're selling it, you want to be a cheesy used car salesperson. We're not going for an R-I-D-E. Oh, we don't even have any seats, you goon. Back at it. I don't know, it shouldn't come down. That gray does not match, but good enough for the girls we go with. Well, now, 
you get these B panel covers. But those are cover up the carpet down here, so I think we're ready to stick the carpet in. That didn't go so bad. Key is don't break the clips. Be very, very careful and know which way to pull. Yeah, it's a little bit darker than I expected, but it's better than crappy tan cardboard color. Oh man, that looks pretty dang good compared to what it was anyway. Let's see if we can make it pretty dang better. So let's try the old paint rejuvenation. So what Duff and I got here is some magic town and country Massey Ferguson gray, which is guaranteed to be a spot on match. Don't you think Duff? And we're just gonna lightly mist this murder stain right here. You, sometimes you want to huff it first, see how it is. I, I recommend gold if you're into huffing. Get yourself a brown paper bag and give her a snort. And then you need a, a, a brush like this, a quickie. Everybody loves a good quickie. And then we're going to just fog her in. If I can figure out, why do they make things so hard to get open these days? Oh, look, this is fresh stuff. And by fresh, I mean fresh from 8 of 20. Oh, well, that's a couple years old. We're just going to... It's, it's, it's a perfect match. Look at that. You can't even tell anymore. It's gone. And then, when she's still tacky, you just fluff it in there. You might have to do the entire carpet, but stain is gone. And it looks better gray than red. What we're doing here is we're just kind of rubbing the paint into the fibers so that it doesn't mat down like a big flat surface. You want it to be uh, malle malleable? I don't know, is that a term? You want it to be soft. And like I said, it is, it's, this stuff would match it per 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 perfect, but this stuff's, you know, it's faded. So we're just, it's not gonna match perfect. And there's guys that will do entire carpets like this. I don't know. It does work pretty good. Look, you can still kind of see where it was, but if you did her long enough, you know, in a couple hours, you'd have this full carpet done, which we ain't gonna do. We're gonna do a couple spots though. I don't think I don't think that looks bad. I'll do this stuff up here, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Nobody'll ever know. Who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. Oh, maybe blend her off a bit, just like the paint guys do. Look at that, what even gets rid of cigarette burns? Just kidding, it don't fix those. I never got to know. Oh, it does kind of hide them though. This is like sawdust in your differential. It fixes everything. The sawdust quiets the gears and lets the engine run as sweet as a nut for a couple of miles. <laughs> That's pretty decent actually. Spray paint and carpets. I'd rather have a mismatched stained gray than a mismatched rust. Okay, there you go. Your cheap trick of the day. Cheap trick, what a great band. How to get stains on a really crappy carpet. You know, if OJ would have done this, they probably would have never caught him. But there was the glove thing too. But OJ didn't do it. Glove didn't fit. Probably work on a crime scene in your house, too. I don't know what you do with the body, though. That's up to you. All right, let's go to the other side. We'll call this good. Hey, what happens to floor mats? Why? I love factory floor mats, and they're always missing. They're just gone. And aftermarket floor mats never fit right, and they're not as good a quality, and here's what it is. Rant over. Ink stains, you say? No more. Beer stains? Be gone. This is so great. Oh, that's a little heavy there. You just mist her in everywhere. A little bit here, a little there. Boom. But wait, there's more. If you buy right now, 
We'll throw in an autograph quickie by Duff. For only six easy payments, $69.95. Fumes, they're getting to me. <coughs> I want to do this outside in a well vented, vent, ventilated area. Scrub every which direction, you know, really work it in there. Work it real good. Well, let's push it. We have that ink stain. He's in there real good. Real nice and deep black. Get in there nice and deep black. I don't think that looks too bad. You can definitely see where I painted, but you could do a lot better job blending. It is what it is. It really shows up on the camera. It doesn't look as bad in person. And obviously when I get the seat in there and it hides this stuff underneath, you probably won't notice it. And it, I didn't have Looks like 18 minutes on the camera, so a lot of that was yammering and yakking and playing with paint and blah, blah, blah. So I feel like in 45 minutes, you could have this whole thing done. Um, you could do it outside the vehicle, or you could do it in here and kind of tape some stuff off that you didn't want to overspray on. I wasn't really worried about anything here because the sill plate's going to cover all this up. But you could do it on the ground too. I just thought it'd be easier with the contour and something pressed against. And, not rubbing a bunch of dirt into it from a shop floor. And I don't condone doing this, but it works in a pinch. And if you got paint that matched better, like I could have, I should have dabbled in a few different paints, but really I didn't have a lot of grays other than primers. And primer would probably work just fine. And I know a lot of people are gonna comment, ah, it's gonna smell like paint, yada, yada, yada. This thing smelled like cigarettes so bad that I feel like paint is probably better than dart smell anyhow. Okay, now we're gonna continue putting the plastic and stuff back together in there. And then we'll be ready to slide a seat on. On, in. Ready to be sliding. Ready, ready to be sliding a seat. I need a sandwich. What do you think? It smells like paint, huh? Interior looks pretty good to me. You can really see where I painted in that one spot on the camera anyway. It's not so bad in real life. I did look floor mats. They're like a hundred bucks for factory used original ones. Ugh. Let's see if I can't scrounge something out of my stash. I wiped everything down with good old spray away. I like it because that lady, she knows how to clean. We'll call her Doris. Doris knows how to clean. Got the jack and all the trim put back in here. I wiped it down pretty good. Not amazing like, but it is what it is. It's almost a shame to put that seat in here. And then I looked up some visors too. Again, they're going for like a hundred bucks for old used ones that aren't that great. I thought about recovering these, but you can see this is basically just cardboard underneath and she's brittle. And originally they were sewn. I don't have a sewing machine and I'm sure my mom, she don't want to sew nothing like that. So I think we're just gonna have to buy some. I thought about just gluing material on there, but it isn't worth our time, as bad a shape as they're in. So if somebody's got some 88 to 98 visors in respectable shape, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I wonder if I can get some off like a 99 to 06 and make them fit. And the reason, the other thing I don't like about those is they got that clip to hold them. So there'll be that odd spot up there. I don't know, maybe we will try recovering these but if i'm gonna recover something i'd like to find something in a little bit better shape so i think i'm just gonna leave those off for the time being because yeah that looks just fine the way it is let's stick a seat in here <coughs> think duff i got a really nice cool rest 
that's got a black lid and then silver sides that would fit great in this vehicle, but I think it would deter from this really nice seat cover. We'll see what we come up with for a seat cover. I'd really like to find a seat and some visors. I did scrounge up some floor mats. They're out of a 04 Chevrolet Silverado crew cab. They're not perfect for this pickup, but again, they'll be good enough. I know I could buy some aftermarket ones that are fitted for this, or hopefully I can find some original ones. I think we're pretty much done with the interiors here. We got a couple other... Oh, I suppose we could put that actuator down there. I don't know if we'll get to that or not. We're kind of running out of time again this week, ain't we, Duff? Too busy doing spa days. But yeah, a good Saturday afternoon. Well, pretty hard Saturday, actually. You could probably get all this stuff done, rip it all apart, wash it. You're going to have to have some time to have the carpet dry, but you could be doing your headliner in the meanwhile and recovering your visors and whatnot. Makes a big difference. We really don't have, I don't know what the material was. We had 60 bucks or something into that. A little bit of spray paint, another five bucks. A little pressure washing, so a couple quarters down with the car wash. I don't know what the door seals were, like 20, 30 bucks, something. Hopefully that fixes our wind noise. Otherwise, yeah, we're gonna have to put these guys in there. Maybe it's the doors that are tweaked. Who knows, I'm sure nobody tried to pry the door open to get it unlocked, judging by. Ooh, that's even a dent there. A good weekend, you can really clean things up. Right, Duff? Wanna go for a ride? Oh, sorry. We're not going for a ride. We're shutting her down for the night. We gotta fix that power steering. Like, that thing is horrendous really getting a puddle going underneath there so that's probably what we should work on next never mind that i haven't changed the mirror on that side yet i put up a post on the old instagram it's probably about 60 percent of the people like this and 39 percent of the people who like the bigger one and one percent like the big old stainless west coaster somebody called it but i don't think they're a west coaster i don't know we're gonna drive it for a while i guess i gotta take that door panel off and pop those new fir trees on there anyway once they show up so see you guys tomorrow in a couple seconds we got blackie up here in the air let's address some leaks i thought we only had one it looks as though we've got multiple so first and foremost that's a power steering leak from been sitting here for about a week wait is that some coolant too i see some coolant in oh sure enough this thing's leaking everything. Looks like the water pump's leaking. Running down the radiator hose. That's a newer water pump too, I thought. Son of a biscuit. It looks like the steering sector is leaking. You can see it hanging down there in the uh, pitman arm. But it also looks like the pump is leaking, so I wonder if it's not dripping down off the pump and down onto the sector. I would sure hate to pull that sector apart and find out that's not the issue. So we might wipe it all down a bit and see. We'll have to go up top here and see for sure. Maybe it's just that clamp that's loose. Because usually the water pump should be wet in the bottom of the pulley. And that looks like a new water pump. So hopefully it's just that clamp. I didn't even notice that one. It looks like the drain plug might be leaking. All well, you can see is washer is kind of off kilter there. Maybe we can just put a new washer on that. We should change oil anyway. At least it's got a Wix filter. Oh, hey, is that one of them daubers that Puddin always talks about? I don't know. Sure enough. Dirt dauber, mud dauber, whatever they call it. Oh, we, we lost him. He fell out of his home. Remain seal looks a little wet. And then remember how we put a transmission seal in last time? Yeah, well, that looks like it's leaking too. The good news is the seal's fine. There's a little plug inside of the yoke it's got a little pinhole in the middle and it's leaking out that pinhole i don't know what that pinhole is there for but we need to plug that because that's a pretty good leak i never noticed that in the driveway so it must just be parked at the right angle or something but it's definitely not our seal so that's maybe good so we'll have to probably pull that drive shaft out and smear some jb weld in there or clean it up and weld it and knock a new u-joint in i don't really know that one's not too concerning a couple of bolts on the uh, pinion and slide the yoke or the drive shaft out get her cleaned up but oh yeah she's oh man the cyclops got her right in its one eye so i think first thing we're going to wipe down the power steering pump and this pitman arm and tighten up that hose clamp see if we can determine where this leak's coming from we're going to drain oil put a new seal on that 
and give it a quick oil change and go from there should be fun we might even grease it while we're underneath here what say you that's probably a good idea who knows when the last time this thing was greased i'm sure we didn't grease it when we put those nice new rusty drop spindles in clearly So here's what we got going on here with the drain plug. It looks like he had a rubber impregnated washer of sorts. She's pretty tore up from the floor up. So we're gonna get an old fashioned plastic one and put on there. Hopefully that seals it up. These are super easy fixes. This is anyway, hopefully. And that oil did not look good. At least this thing came with a fresh 51060 Wix filter though. Look at that plastic one we found. That's what all the old school engines have, so it fits on here perfectly. So I think that should seal her up way gooder. I don't think these are stock. Let me know. You guys ever seen one of these on a TBI GM? I haven't. So we got our oil change plugged back in with our new seal, new Wix 51060 filter with some Chevron Delo 10W30 oil in it, Sin Blend. We got our lower red meter hose wiped off. We got our sector wiped off. We got our pump wiped off. We greased all of our Zerks on the steering and suspension down here. So now I think we just run her in a bit. See where the leaks develop. I don't know if I want to pull that drive shaft yet. Probably should because it's leaking pretty freaking bad. Might have to jack the back end up for that. Yeah, I did get a couple turns out of that clamp up there on that hose clamp. And like I said, it looks like a new water pump. Or it's been replaced. It doesn't have any paint on it. It's all rusty, so it's been replaced recently. I'm thinking the power steering pump. This is like the reservoir canister and the pump just kind of slides in there and there's a big o-ring that goes around that entire pump where it goes in that canister. It was wet around that, I noticed just a second ago. I wiped that off again just to make sure it wasn't brake cleaner from when I was spraying her off. So we'll see if that resolves the issue on that. Maybe it was just leaking down and hitting this sector. And also I noticed on this sector there's this umbrella in here. You see that little seal right there? And it should be slid up into the sector. And that was slid down so i don't know if oil caused that or pressure caused that or what but there's definitely some stuff going on there so i'm not entirely positive it's just the pump the pump's going to be a lot easier to replace than pulling this thing out and putting seals in it also a lot cheaper too i think these things are like 250 300 bucks pumps are probably 50 or 100 bucks Either way, a messy job. And uh, the big thing with this is you gotta split the pitman arm. And I've had terrible luck with those. I know there's tools for it, but they never seem to work out for me. All right, let's figure out what we're gonna do next here. Did a little dig in on this yoke leak. I know there's a frost plug or a welch plug in the center of these yokes. And so I grabbed a couple of Turbo 350 yokes that I got new there on the shelf. They're the same as a 700 R4 or 4L60E. And mine don't have the hole in the center, so I did a little Google box. And, and you go online and a lot of guys see this and they say, I ah, just smear that hole shut. Well, that hole's there for a reason, I guess. It's part of a vent or something. And there's an O-ring on the output shaft in here that it sounds like is bad, which causes it to leak past that O-ring and inside of here and out that seal. So you probably could seal it. But I think we're gonna do the right thing for once and we're gonna get a seal for this extension housing and then we'll see if we can't find that O-ring and put on there. Cause we gotta take the drive shaft off anyway. So it's just a matter of taking the speedo sensor wire off, four bolts, pop it off. We'll do it right. I know a lot of guys probably would smear that shut but I couldn't get my fat fingers in there if I needed to. Plus it wouldn't be cleaned off. Plus that hole's there for a reason. And like I said, this thing really wasn't leaking before. So I suppose when we slid that drive shaft off to move the rear end and to put that seal in, that's when it tore up that o-ring so we'll see if we can't get one of those coming and fix that that's the first issue we're not going to address for now i could just put one of those other yokes in there but i feel like that hole's there to to vent when it goes up and down when that o-ring is good but if that o-ring's bad we probably could schmoo it shut but i don't like silicone it's not the answer next leak power steering pump 
it is leaking around that o-ring around the pump so i think i looked in a new pump it's like 115 bucks you can get remands anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks so we'll get one of those coming i know i could take it apart and just put that o-ring in there but it's not worth it to me i'm just gonna put a new one on and so that being said i think that leak is just coming down and hitting this guy because i don't see anything leaking yet so before i go through all the time and effort of pulling that sector out and resealing it which i don't have very good luck resealing sectors we're just going to leave that and see if we can see a leak coming out of there after maybe a couple of test drives or a couple of days i don't see anything coming out of the coolant leak so hopefully we resolve that by tightening that clamp like i said i got a couple turns out of it the next thing i thought the wheels were rubbing on the lower control arms at full lock turns out they are but i thought it was the tires rubbing back here Oh no, they're rubbing on my rim. So we're gonna turn these wheels full lock and we're gonna take the old grinder and clean them up so we don't scuff up my rims any more than we already have. So that's an easy fix. I thought we were gonna have to bash in this lip on the backside here to get clearance for the tire. So that's easy enough. If we'd have probably had like a 15 by seven stock steel wheel or any other wheel than whatever these are, 16 by eights, I think, wouldn't have been a problem. We'll get that resolved. All kinds of good stuff we're finding under here. We'll get it worked out though. And I know you old guys would be like, well, if you wouldn't have lowered that stupid thing. Well, yeah, if I wouldn't have put these wheels on it, it wouldn't have happened either. If I wouldn't have lowered it and put these wheels on it, this thing would just look like the crappy old beater farm pickup piece of trash that it was. So eat it, old man, Dwayne, whatever your name is. I'm sure that's who's screaming at the screen right now. Probably some guy named Dwayne. Oh, you ruined that pickup by lowering it. Well, sorry, it's not your pickup. It's mine. Right, Duff? You're just napping away over there. Well, how about that, Duff? Got her at full lock. Turns good. Barely had to take any material off. I'll show you what we took off. Just hit her with the flap disc. Real quick like. And you can barely even tell what we took off. How's it look, Duff? Check her out. Look good? Just like you after your haircut. And then your butt's all dirty from sitting in the dirty spots in the shop floor. So that problem's resolved. You'd be surprised how many times you go full lock. Like it was literally the last 16th of a turn on the steering wheel that it would rub, apparently. We are good to go now. Pretty excited about that. That really annoyed me. It's really sounded like a tire. Did not sound like the rim. Unfortunately, we scuffed up the inside of those rims, but nobody sees them. Plus they're too shiny for us anyway. Ain't they duff? What's next on the list? So if you'll remember at the beginning of this video, I got a blend door actuator hanging down there that we needed to replace. But I think it's the control unit on the HVAC. See how it stays flashing like that? Anyway, instead of swapping that out, I just got it hanging down there by the connector. And these things are just a terrible design. You hear a lot of bad things about them. They made several different ones, whether you had AC or didn't have AC, whether you had recirc or didn't have recirc. So you turn it on blower motor works fine but this stuff stays flashing and I was trying before I replaced that I thought oh, I'll just cycle it between you know your feet and your face and defrog and whatnot and see if that actuator turns it does not I know a guy who's got to use one of these so I'm gonna get a hold of him see if we put that in if that fixes it because right now it's just kind of stuck between floor and your face and we don't have defrost ideally I would like it stuck on defrost because that's my main concern. If I can't see because the windshield ain't defrogged, then I ain't going nowhere. So I might even actually take that actuator off and turn that so that it's stuck on defrog. And we'll see if we can get this. We really can't diagnose the AC. I don't want to go through diagnosing the AC until we get this guy situated. So if you got one of these that's got AC and recirc, and it might be good, or you know it's good, even better yet, Hit us up with an email, mortgagerepair at gmail.com, and I will buy it from you. Also, we got to get the CD install kit and get the pocket that goes in here and get rid of this ugly old radio stuff. And we got to do some wiring inside to get that tucked in, slid down a little bit further. And we need a dash. We're not going to address any AC or blend door issues today. The list is getting shorter. Okay, what's next? Also, does anybody know? What holds these shifters in place? You know, it should stay like up there. This one's just floppy. There's a spring in there that 
keeps it from going back and forth. That's in the pin. I get that, but it's keeping it from going back and forth. Never had one do that. I don't really care, but I kind of want to know. Cruise works good, even though too lazy to fish the wire through the inside of the column. Right, Duff? You don't care about HVAC or cruise. You just go for R-I-D-E-S. Okay. We got her up on defrog. I don't know how to show you guys, other than all the crap that flew out of there. It's been a long time since defrog has worked. But what we did, we took, not that actuator, this actuator off, the original one. And then we just turned this guy right here, which pushes these guys. So that's defrog. You watch those move, maybe. There's floor, and there's face. So we're just gonna turn her over and leave her on defrog for now. Should be good to go until we can figure out our actuator. I think it was a little bit sticky because it's been a long time since she moved. But now we gotta figure out if we can turn this thing all the way so we can put it back on there. Actually, we don't even really need it on there, but it would be nice to put it back on there. We shall see. Worst case scenario, we can just leave it like that. I don't think it's gonna bounce anywhere. It's gonna bounce off of defrog. I doubt. No, most definitely not. Oh yeah, you can see when I got it to floor, all the crap that it flew out of those vents on my nice new clean carpet. So hopefully we can get a controller and resolve this. Why doesn't anybody rebuild these? You know, they made these HVAC controllers for what? Six, seven years, 88 to 94. They left a lot to be desired. Or come up with something better. I know like the really cheap, like the Cheyennes, I think they even had the slide knobs and that would be the way to go. But that looks like a lot of work to convert everything over. I'm at least glad we got defrog now. I think we're getting close to taking it for a test drive. The dust's all loaded up. I think we're ready to go for a rip. We didn't aim the headlights. How I aim headlights, and probably what most of the world does, you find a flat surface and then you find a perpendicular surface to the ground or parallel to the headlights 25 feet away and you mark a spot about waist high three foot something like that and you adjust them to that height and then aim them so that they you know kind of line up in the center of the grill maybe off to the passenger side just a hair so you're not glaring the person coming at you in the uh, eye sockets easy enough I can already tell this one looks like she's pointed out and up this one looks pretty good there's usually some adjusters on the top and or the sides to do that we're not going to show you that today because it's bright out and i don't feel like doing it so i'm just going to deal with it i'm going to go for a ride test her out so we did quite a bit of stuff here fixed some leaks did an oil change found out why our wheels were rubbing identified a few more leaks Door hinges, mirrors, door latches, totally revamped the interior, basically, other than what we don't have parts for. Uh, diagnosed the HVAC. I did do a tune-up on this thing outside of this video. Um, when I was doing that throttle body base gasket, I did put plugs and wires, cap rotor and stuff in. And I found out that the heater hose that hooks into the intake, they got these fancy clip. Anybody who's had one of these or working on one of these knows they are made out of some pot metal and you just breathe on them and they break and this thing's just a big old ball of JB weld and it's holding so hopefully it holds out I do have that new fitting but because of all that JB weld or whatever they put on there I need to find that chunk of hose with the connector coming off the firewall so I'm gonna have to find a donor pickup for that but hopefully we can find a donor pickup with some gray interior for door panels and all that stuff but yeah we got a lot of stuff done and even identified a few more things like a power steering pump and a transmission seal that we need to address. Let's go for a ride. Well, what do you think, Duff? Doesn't even smell like spray paint. Still smells like stale cigarettes. It's pretty good though, and a seat cover. I think we're gonna find a seat cover or a seat, something. Let's do this. Once I put the booster on the battery, cause it's dead from the dome light and the hood being open. Son of a biscuit, never fails. I'll be back in a second. All right, these booster packs, they are handy. Like a glove. Like a glove. All right, 
with the between the new door latches and the hinges and the new door seals sometimes you got to take the latches out and like ratchet strap the doors shut from side to side and that'll squeeze in the bulb seals to take them to make a, make a fit them you know otherwise it's, the bulb seals push so hard against the doors oh, right there that door would clunk up and down every time we back down the driveway so it's already better those mirrors they're not terrible are they Duff? no they're not terrible yeah the gravel street here they would definitely be clunking around so it must have mostly been in this one but we put the latch at that side anyway since we just about had her apart to put that mirror in. Got a little like rattle in the exhaust. I don't know if something's falling apart in the catalytic, catalytic, catalytic converter. It's the only thing I can think of because from the cat back it's all new and then really all you got else that's there is the Y pipe. You got a half tank of gas. Should be good. Got oil pressure after our oil change. Also good. It's a balmy 28 degrees today, which is pretty good considering what we've been having. Like 30 mile an hour winds, those are getting real old. Spring can show up anytime now. It was actually here for a few weeks, and then it decided to leave again. Yeah, the seat belts in this thing are absolutely disgusting as well, so hopefully when we find a seat, we'll get some seat belts too. The retractors leave a bit to be desired as well. I don't get it. The odometer works and the speedometer works, but the trip meter does not. So we'd have to do write down what the mileage is and we fill up the fuel, which we never do. So I don't know what this thing gets for mileage. I'm guessing 13, 14, something like that. Isn't that pretty common with these TBIs? She's charging. That's good because we don't want to. We don't want to die with a dead battery. Ooh, a Raptor. What do you guys think of those? I don't agree with how much money they cost, but I think they'd be fun to beat on. Way better than the Ford Broncos. Don't they make a Raptor edition of that now or something? Wind noise is better, but I can still hear it. I think I gotta put that other seal up there. Maybe it's this seal on the bottom. And also I think I forgot to put that full push-in piece on the mirror on this side. I don't think I forgot. I know I forgot. But when we take that door panel off to put new clippies on, we'll address it then. And I guess I kind of expect some wind noise on a 30 year old rig. So I'm cool with it. My 17 year old Dodge has way worse wind noise. So I think we'll, we'll deal with it. Pretty good. What do you think of the new interior, Duff? It's so nice you just want to take it down. Gotcha. Cruise control. Oh, so nice having a cruise. Well, we're eight miles in, and the wind noise is significantly better. Got a couple squeaks going on in the dash. Can't imagine all those busted up plastic pieces were structural at all. Something's rattling around there. Let me just turn the radio up louder. That's with the stereo and the, the Bluetooth. I forgot about the Bluetooth so I can take phone calls. I can probably almost hear them now with the wind noise resolution that we did. But man, I can Bluetooth my phone and play some sweet tune. Hey, there's a pickup box right there. Son of a biscuit. I might have to swing in and check it out. That's close enough to home. It's, it looks a little chewy. Oh man, you can see where they salted the roads. Ugh. It's dried up. We don't want this thing getting all rusty. But yeah, this thing's got a radio in it, so uh, you, can, you can really mask a lot of those squeaks and wind noise by just cranking her up to 11. Duff don't really care for music, though, so not his deal. Oh, we got the frost, too. Let's turn that son of a biscuit on. Let's see if she's working. And it's moved to the floor. We'll have to address that again. Son of a biscuit. The thing with that actuator is, is it's got notches on the outside so you can visually see where it's at and then it's got a big flat on it that lines up with that. So you can just put a big flat screwdriver and turn it to where you need it to go manually. Yeah, she's definitely on the floor now. So maybe this thing auto reset. Maybe it's not working because the battery was dead. It's still flashing though, it should be charging. I don't know, we gotta address that. AC would sure be nice in the summertime. Now when it's 28 degrees, so we'll play around with that. We got a little experience. 
experience with AC stuff. I got vacuum pump and I got keg of Freon and some gauges. That's pretty much all you need, right? Cross that bridge when we get there when it's about uh, 70 degrees warmer. Oh man, that headliner. So good. Just wipe the window down. You're already slobbered on it. Air blowing out, it's not that hot either. I wonder if that blood door is screwed up. The whole heater thing is screwed up, so it's not telling it to send hot air, it's just saying send air. Who knows? I definitely think that controller is our issue. Well, we made it about 25 miles. I knew it was going to drive well. Uh, the wind noise is better. It doesn't stink like spray paint here, so I think it's a win. Got a couple more things to address from the interior aspect and new things that we found. Let's see if we can... Oh, we're slowing down now. Let's see if we can turn full lock. Oh, it still rubs. Yep, still rubs. Must be, it must sit at a different angle when it's got weight on it, so we'll have to clearance the control arms just a little bit more. At least we know what it is now. Easy enough fix. We'll have to jack up on the control arm when we do it so everything sits at the angle it is when it's at right height. I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up though. What do you think, Duff? Anything else you want to add? So yeah, we got a lot done on this thing. Mainly interior, but got a few things done in the undercarriage. Hopefully, we can resolve some leaks, get rid of some rattles in the door. Got some classier mirrors on here. They're really not as bad as I remember them being. They're actually pretty good. Click down below. Think about joining the Duff Approved Club. We got a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on there, and we got some discount on some merch. Go down below uh, if you want to purchase some merch. Uh, I suggest the next level shirts. Get them a size bigger, they run a little bit tight. So if you're uh, an XL like me, get a double X. If you're a large, get an XL. Summer is just around the corner. I know it's only 28 degrees here in Podunk, but before we know it, there'll be 75 degree days like probably they're having in Oklahoma and Alabama, Florida, right now. Now what is so damn funny? So thank you very much for watching. Duff and I both appreciate it very much. Check out our other videos. Check out the other video when we got this thing going. And transformed most of the exterior. Got it a little bit lower. Got it running. And remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. That's some fun pulling this interior apart. It's always nice when you can spruce something up on a budget. Find a new seat. That's not going to be very budget friendly. Oh, well, what should we work on next? I wish we could refresh the interior on K5 Blazer on a budget, but I feel like we need some floors and some seats, carpet, and gauges.